first question, what makes you different than the other candidates? Well, I think there's two great distinctions uh, between myself and the other candidates for president. Uh, the first one being I'm the only free market candidate. Uh, you know, if you look at Kamala Harris, Donald Trump, Jill Stein, Cornell West, the rest of them, I am the true free market candidate that's actually defending capitalism, wanting to remove the croniest element of capitalism so it's actually a more free market system and tearing down trade barriers with our nations around the world. So I think that is one thing that makes me distinct. The other is I'm 39 years old. I'm the youngest candidate for president, I think, that's been on the ballot across the country, maybe ever. Certainly, I am providing a new generational viewpoint in this race that none of my opponents uh, really have. And that's because I grew up in the war on terror years. You know, uh, that really informed my adulthood, seeing our nation going to war for 20 years, seeing the economy fall out in 2008, 2009, just right as we were getting started. And my generation, the millennial generation, is a is ready to rise up and have more of a voice in our politics, certainly so we can make it better for those who are coming behind us, because we certainly feel like we've been left out of the discussion for way too long. Give me a quick rundown of bullet points on your stance on other major issues. Generally, if you look at our philosophy, it's one that's rooted in the non-aggression principle that says if you're not harming anyone or committing any offense to anyone else's civil liberties, you should be free to go about your business. And that's why we really seek to limit the government in every area possible. We want to balance the federal budget so we're not creating trillions of dollars a year out of thin air uh, with debt and deficit spending and having kind of the Federal Reserve having such a strong grip on our economy through its practices. We want to completely end the drug war because we say if you're an adult, you should be able to consume what you want so long as you're not harming anyone else. And we could actually better address the issues of, say, addiction or young people using drugs if we don't make this into a criminal justice issue and instead look at this as a cultural or a health issue that needs to be addressed. Certainly looking to nations like Portugal that have decriminalized all drugs uh, for that. We're an anti-war party that says that we shouldn't be exporting our values around the world with the bomb, the bullet, and the drone. The Libertarian Party has long been the true anti-war party in this country, and whether it is our exporting our wars around the world or using terrorism or war as a justification to curtail civil liberties and privacy here at home, libertarians stand up for the rights of the individual and their civil liberties, uh, not just as prescribed in the Constitution, but which are inherent to each and every person. We're all born free. What comments do you have about the upcoming election? Well, you know, uh, my main commentary is is that it's sad that both of the, quote, major party candidates, end quote, trying to fight for an economy that is controlled by Washington, D.C., whether it's through protectionist trade policies like tariffs and things of that nature, or whether it's trying to in induce price controls or uh, which will create shortages in the marketplace. It's sad that both Donald Trump and Kamala Harris have fallen away from what has really made our country great, what really made America great, which is our free market system, the idea of meritocracy, and the idea that if you are able to apply yourself, you can always climb up the ladder for the most part. So these are things that were central to the American dream a generation ago, but it seems that in the age of Donald Trump, Joe Biden, and now Kamala Harris, those ideals are getting further and further away. Does Mike Termott wear eyeliner or is he as creepy as the Wisconsin governor? Uh, you know, he is not, actually. I got to say, uh, I, now that you've said it, I'm going to have to see Mike in eyeliner one day. But no, I don't think he does. Uh, you know, he's a pretty straight-laced fellow. He looks great in a three-piece suit. You know, he's a former law enforcement officer. So he, uh, he always is, uh, you know, dressed very professionally, I got to say. I've even taken some style tips from Mike Termott on that uh, account. But no, he is, and he is a, a very nice family man, I can tell you right now. Uh, he's got about the, the greatest wife I've ever met. She's super awesome. And I can tell you right now, if he was a creep, uh, she wouldn't be uh, suffering him at all. <laughs> all right, Chase, before I let you go, because I know you're a busy, busy man, what closing comments do you have? What do you want people to hear you say before we let you go? Well, I want people to understand that uh, your vote is an investment, and you don't just have to vote for the person you think might win or vote because you think someone else shouldn't win. You should really vote for who you believe is best and express your values with your vote, most especially if you live in a deep red or deep blue state. I would wager that your investment in the Libertarian Party allowing us to grow up and become a true competitor is a better use of your resource of your vote. And so I encourage people to go to my website, go to the websites of my opponents, and really look at our platforms and think about which one aligns best with your values and what you think will be best for our future in terms of our economy, our prosperity, and making a better world for the next generations coming up.